Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have Chris Hardwick back joining us here today. And uh, he is so much more than an adventurepreneur. He is a man that discovers, that travels, that inspires. And he's here to help you with his coaching, with his workshops, with his travel, with his talks. He's also an author. Uh, he's a risk taker. And this man has many titles. Hails from Vancouver, beautiful British Columbia in Canada. And we're excited to have him back. Go ahead. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, Jill. How are you doing? I'm doing great, but probably not as good as you. What have you been up to? Oh, I was climbing another mountain yesterday in the horrendous rain up here in Vancouver, but that's okay because it's snowing in the mountains. So it's an exciting time of year. <laughs> oh, and how do we contact you? Would you mind sharing? Yeah, probably the best way is just to Google me at Chris Hardwick Leadership or jump on my website, Chris Hardwick Inc. Dot com. Beautiful. Well, tell us a little bit about what it is you do, and then we're excited to get into today's conversation. Yeah, I spend most of my time working with adventure-seeking entrepreneurs, business owners, and business leaders, and I do that through a combination of peer groups, coaching, uh, corporate retreats, uh, uh, adventures off into the mountains and slot canyons and skiing and all kinds of crazy places, and uh, really just like to get people outside and uh, give them an opportunity to challenge themselves. Beautiful. And how are you going to challenge us today? Well, I love talking about how we can bring the culture of adventure into organizations yeah. and um, what that can mean uh, for businesses. So, yeah, mm. really around the culture of adventure. Perfect. And what's upcoming for us? I can't wait to learn more because I know you're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, it's just, it's just my happy place. And uh, I found, I find that with so much uncertainty that everyone is facing these days, uh, uncertainty, I mean, politics, yeah. religion, war, business, technology, artificial intelligence, there's just so much change going on around us that people uh, really need to be able to learn how to adapt uh, to these new realities that are happening. And one of the things that I love about bringing the culture of adventure into organizations is it allows people to be facing new challenges and learning how to overcome their fears and taking calculated risks and the learning that takes place as a result of these experiences is what enables um, people to take on new challenges, to build confidence in themselves and to, um, yeah, both in their personal lives and in their business lives. So that's, mm. that's the connection between adventure and business and culture. That, that really is the opportunity, Jill. Yep. And Chris Hardwick uh, can be reached uh, at the website. Uh, it's your name, C-H-R-I-S-H-A-R-D-W-I-C-K and then I-N-C, just to let you know. That's He's right. our That's risk R -R management expert. Ooh, 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 check him out. All right. Where are we starting today? Go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I'm, um, you know, one of the other things that I like to, to really address is uh, how we can bring uh, an adventurous culture into organizations and how that can enhance employee engagement and satisfaction. Um, I think that, that the, the ongoing growth of our team members and our employees is really, really important. When people are given the opportunity in their organizations to grow and develop, um, they will learn new skills. And yeah. so sometimes we need to challenge them. We need to um, give them an opportunity to rise mm -hmm. up to the challenge. And it's through these challenges that they will grow. Um, I, you know, the, one of the stats I've seen is, is that about 75 to 80% of people leave their organizations because they're dissatisfied with their direct boss, their immediate yeah. supervisor. And if we can... In, 
increase and improve the relationships between direct supervisors and their direct reports, um, the, that will dramatically reduce turnover in organizations. And so one of the wonderful ways of doing that is actually doing stuff, you know, getting outside, going for a walk, uh, going on a little adventure, getting your team out into the park, throwing the Frisbee around, uh, playing some games, throwing a ball around, whatever it takes. Like we really need to lean into those relationships and build those relationships uh, within our teams. So that, that for me is uh, a huge, a huge thing. And everyone's so busy these days. They're just, you know, responding to emails, trying to hit those schedules, trying to hit those targets. And what's happened is no one's having any fun anymore. Yeah, it's so true. What happened to the joy of it all? Exactly. So this is a huge opportunity for organizations to just change the conversation and create some opportunities to develop uh, deeper interpersonal relationships between team members. And, um, and, you know, that's why I like to use adventure as not only a metaphor, but as a, as a real thing that we can be doing within our teams, within our organizations, and with our team members and employees. Yeah. Wow. And if someone, you know, first of all, let me just ask, are you speaking anywhere soon? Can we find you anywhere soon? I'm booking speaking engagements for next year. Uh, right. the, the balance of this year is committed to uh, getting a couple of books uh, wrapped up that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, one of them is around my latest adventure to climb Mount Kilimanjaro with a group of clients last year. Wow. Um, and the other one is actually around what it means to be an adventurepreneur, which is really the combination of adventure and business. I like to say it's where business and adventure meet. So it's yeah. really bringing those together uh, in adventurepreneurialism. Wow. All right. And yeah, so stay tuned for that. They'll be dropping in the new year. And then, uh, yeah, I'm booking speaking engagements uh, currently for next year. All right. Thank you. And what else is in mind for us today? There's just so much to cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, one of the other things, uh, you know, I, I, I did have a few questions here for myself around how do you ensure the culture of adventure remains inclusive and accessible. And that's a really important thing because, you know, we may have some people with both mental or physical uh, in, impairments or handicaps within our business. When we're looking at uh, team engagement, we want to make sure that this is something that we can do where everybody can participate and all people can get involved. Uh, I think that some ad examples of some of the sorts of things that we've done uh, and how this positively impacted business is is improved engagement um, through um, yeah really opening up and creating these new challenges for people um, leads to growth and development of the individuals yeah. and a lot of people when they're overwhelmed with um, Prospective challenges or when they're, as I mentioned earlier, when they're dealing with uncertainty in their lives, if we can build their confidence through creating situations where they can be confronted with challenges, yeah. where maybe they have to dig deep to overcome their existing fears and apprehension. If we can walk them through this process, it really is a journey of discovery. Yeah where they will grow and learn new skills. And that we use exa examples in team building and in these adventures as a way for people to build confidence in themselves and to prove to themselves what they are truly capable of doing. And then they can bring this directly back into their role and their work within the organizations mm -hmm. so that they are... Uh, really developing more ideas, they're more open to change, and they're more open to being challenged. Yeah, I love it. Because, you know, in this day and age, how do you inspire 
to start opening up these new doors, right? When people sometimes live in this closed world and they aspire to have more to dream more to do more, but they're just sitting there. They're not motivated. How are you motivating them? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I've, I've had situations with some clients where I really had to, uh, you know, really get them to get up, get out and get outside. I, I just, this is connection that, is so important between um, just being in the office all the time, sitting in front of the computer. A lot of people just get stuck in that um, that sort of mindset where they they're so stressed, they're so overwhelmed, uh, and they think that by just doubling down and working harder and pushing through it, you know, just that they're going to have this magical sort of outcome yeah. where they're going to achieve success. And, and in my experience, that's not the case. We need to stop what we're doing and we need to reset ourselves and our minds. Mm -hmm. And the best way that I know to just do a reset is to get up out of your desk, go for a walk. Don't just go on your own, though. Go with somebody else. Even if it's just around the block or outside, get outside. Get some fresh mm -hmm. air in your lungs. Breathe. Have a conversation. Get to know somebody else that you work with. Mm -hmm. Even if it's only for five or ten minutes. And I, I guarantee you, when you come back into the office, you'll be able to refocus and that five or 10 minutes that you were gone is going to yield incredible results in terms of your efficiency and just the, your brain is going to be thinking much clearer because you've just had a simple five or 10 minute break and gone for a walk. So true, so right? I, I think that that's just a really simple way for us to reset the mind, refocus, uh and get some clarity into why we're doing what we're doing. Oh, and a lot of us need that clarity. And that's why you're helping us, Chris, remind us how we can contact you before we continue, please. Yeah, just Google me at Chris Hardwick Leadership Yep. Uh, and uh, schedule a call. I got a Calendly link, and uh, I'm happy to jump on a call and meet you. Uh, you can hit my website, chrishardwickinc.com. Uh, and that's another great way to book a call because I'm pretty busy. Uh, well, not busy. I hate that word busy. I'm strategically, you know, I've got lots of clients that I'm working with and helping them uh, grow their lives and their businesses. Yeah. So I find that just booking a call with me that works for both of our schedules is the easiest way to get a hold of me. And then I, I just love jumping on the phone and meeting people from different places and different backgrounds and exploring how uh, we may be able, to be able to assist one another. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And again, we're here with Chris talking about uh, the work he's doing, helping you connect as a coach. And, you know, what is upping you from climbing that mountain? You know, some people need this little push and he has this. And as a world traveler, the experience and the passion to succeed, clearly he knows what he's doing and he's here to help you uh, to share his process, right? To learn how you can do it too. And uh, yeah. you do the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you do the peer group coaching, uh, also speaking engagements, as we discussed, and also teen development. So you're working for corporations as well. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to get, uh, well, I'm doing also involved in some corporate health and wellness programs and corporate retreats as well, where I like to take entire uh, leadership teams off on adventures, getting, again, getting them outside uh, whether it's a, a you know a strategic planning workshop, an annual offsite, or something like that, uh, or even getting uh, away with spouses uh, on some corporate retreats. So, yeah, there's a lot of different things I do, and uh, I, I I don't have a tremendous number of clients. I like to work with a fairly small group of clients, clients, but we go pretty deep. Yeah, and um, you know because, and that's why I offer. Mm -hmm. different services uh, and not any one particular thing 
I do get bored with stuff, you know, so Okay. I like to keep, you know, I need a lot of variety in my life as well. And uh, I love getting to meet new people and build new relationships and see how we can, um, you know, forge a path ahead that revolves around change, overcoming fears, being challenged, uh, Yep. learning how to change the story that's going on in our heads and ultimately growing their businesses so they can live the life of their dreams, really. Um, Oh. if you've got a business that's a wonderful vehicle uh, that is, is, you know, bringing in whatever sort of revenue and profitability that you're looking for, that really, really will set you up for success, your family, and also your employees and your team members. It really does lift everybody up on this journey. So that's that's how I like to get involved through all levels of the organization, not just the business owners and the senior leaders, but but working with the teams within those organizations. Hmm. Love Yeah. it. Well, thank you again for being here, for joining us. And we still have 10 more minutes to talk. So there's plenty of more time. Please stay with us as uh, we discuss more um, of your work and the types of things that you could help us with. Could you give us an example of someone you're working with or have worked with and the the benefits of, you know, having you there as, as a cheerleader? I mean, you're holding their hand, you're taking them up that mountain and bringing them down. Yeah, Literally I, you know, I was and working. figuratively, right? <laughs> Yeah, so earlier this year, I had a, a client in Montana, and uh, we were doing a, a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and um, with his leadership team. Okay. And the day before, we'd been out skiing uh, in a couple of feet of fresh powder. Uh, it was an amazing day. Uh, a couple of other people from the company were out. So it was just a good, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday, we were just, having some fun, getting to know one another. And then the next day, as we got the team together, you know, a couple of days uh, Like, plowing hey. through a lot of the challenges, one of the things that came up was that the company was so overwhelmed in the previous couple of years. They get so busy in the summer that they were Oh, just, wow. everyone was like going crazy. They were working insane hours Yep. and it was just, It was just people were, you know, getting overwhelmed. They were getting burnt out. They were getting stressed. There was people like arguing and fighting with one another. And so we got to the bottom of all of that. We understood what was going on. And we put a whole series of steps in place uh, the first few months of this year. You know, I, I speak with my client every month. Uh, typically, I work on a monthly cycle. And during the course of spring, as we were rolling in all of these new Uh, some new software. We had to exit a couple of people because they just didn't fit with the values and the culture of the organization. We brought a couple of new people into the organization. I kept checking in with, with my client over the course of the summer. And he's like, I don't believe it. Like nobody's stressed. Mm Nobody's hmm Yeah. working overtime. Everybody's getting along. All the systems and processes we put in at the beginning of the year are all working just fine. Our revenue's up, our profitability's up, everybody's happy, everybody's getting along. And it was like, wow, Yeah. that's amazing. And that was just because we confronted the issues and we, we got out, we had some fun together, we got to know one another, we went out for a couple of dinners as well, I got to know all the team leads, and we just sort of broke down all the barriers and we had a really great time and the company is just like, absolutely flying right now. That's just one example. Beautiful. I love hearing those. And did you want to share another or do you have other insight for the rest of the show? Where do you want to, you know, go next? What journey, Yeah, what peak are I we will climbing share one today? other because I, Sure. I do like doing these uh, corporate offsites, these strategic planning sessions, because deep down, I am a strategist. So I love strategy. And uh, but, you know, Peter Drucker, famous uh, author, he talks about That's, it sounds culture familiar. eats Okay. strategy for breakfast. Okay. And so I want to bring it back to the culture of adventure in business. You can have the best strategy in, this, in the world, but if you don't have a team that's aligned with the values of the owner and the organization, if you don't uh, you know, deal with some of the bad apples in a bunch sometimes, and maybe you need to coax them out of the organization, When you get the right people on the bus and you've got all the right people in the right places, 
Now the next most important thing is to double down on the culture of the organization and have an intentional culture. And in my experience, building an intentional culture of adventure yeah. is the game changer in organizations. And mm -hmm. so that that is so important. And that is one of the things that I love helping my clients uh, and their businesses with is bringing that culture into the organization and allowing people to really face their fears, challenge the story that they've got going on in their head around what they think they can or cannot do, uh, expose them some new opportunities and new ways of growing and learning about themselves and their team members, building deeper relationships with their team members, mm -hmm. um, being open to change. You know, you've got to have people with a growth mindset. If you've got True. people with a fixed mindset who don't like change. Not going to work. That's not going to work, right? So pursuing these new challenges and opportunities and really coaching people on how to overcome fear and uncertainty. So that's the process that I work through with my clients. Interesting. And, you know, you're based, uh, you know, in Canada, but you're working with people all over the world, right? Yeah, I've got clients in Africa and uh, I'm looking, uh, I'm speaking with some people in South America at the moment and clients in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, I am a bit of a globe trotter. I do like to travel around the world pretty regularly, climbing mountains and going on other crazy adventures, slot canyons in southern Utah and what have you. Um, yeah, it's what turns my crank, Jill. Oh, I love it. Turns your crank. <laughs> and I love finding out about yeah. other people, what turns their crank, really. Because, oh. you know, when I find out what turns a person's crank, as I like to say that, that's a way we can sort of double down and dive deep and talk about, well, how can we do more of that? How can we create opportunities in our lives for us to have more of those opportunities to grow and learn and foster? Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, Chris Harwick, as an entrepreneur, where are you traveling to next, by the way? Last time we spoke, you just got back from vacation. I forgot where you were. Uh, I was uh, in Africa again. Africa, was, uh, again, that's six right. Six weeks in Africa. I was traveling from South Africa, kiteboarding off the coast of Mozambique, climbing mountains in Malawi, getting chased by uh, hippopotamuses and uh, lions in in uh, Zimbabwe, I did some more kiteboarding in uh, Zanzibar, an island off the coast oh, of uh, Dar es Salaam. Wow. But, uh, my next big trip is off to Japan. I'm going skiing in Japan uh, at the end of this year. My three boys are meeting me there, and we're going to spend a couple of weeks uh, in uh, Hakuba in Honshu and then heading up to Nishiki uh, on the north island of Hokkaido. So I like to slot in lots of big trips every year and then lots of smaller trips, you know, close to, to home in, in, you know, in the U.S. and Canada. Amazing. So Amazing. always, always got trips on the horizon. I'm uh, actually building a schedule for next year, which I'm going to publish for people that want to come on some of these trips, looking at a mountain bike riding trip in Peru, oh. uh, some more mountain climbing in Africa and Europe and uh slot canyons and hiking trips and backcountry ski trips so i like to be very active <laughs> clearly and if you someone out there today is listening oh why should they reach out to you what would you say to them yeah you know if people feel a little stuck if they're a little overwhelmed and they're a little uncertain about what the future holds for them mm -hmm. uh that's three areas where I would love to just, as I say, find out what turns you crank. A lot of people used to be very active doing all kinds mm -hmm. of things, right? And, you know, there's something that they were passionate about and they've, they've sort of boxed it up and put it away and told themselves that they're not able to do that anymore. I want to find out about those things. Mm -hmm. I want to find out the things that, you know, when you were 10 years old, what did you want to be when you grew up? And then what happened? And how come you squashed your dream, right? So let's let's dig deep and get into some of these things, find out what it is that really gets you excited, that gets you wanting to jump out of bed so you can get on with your day. I want to hear about those things. 
want to learn, you know, what, what you're missing, how you're stuck, how you're overwhelmed. Let's dig into that and build a relationship. Beautiful. Sounds good to me. Remind us again how we can contact you. And thank you again for, for joining us as always. Yeah, just Google me at uh, Chris Hardwick Leadership or uh, hit me up on my website at Chris Hardwick Inc. That's C-H-R-I-S-H-A-R-D-W-I-C-K Inc. dot com. Thank and you I so much, Chris. I look forward to having a chat with you. Same here. Thanks again. Always a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we'll talk before your next travel, I hope. All righty. Thank sure. you so much, Chris. Enjoy the day. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.